Um, are you guys okay? Doing okay there? We'll go through the main PDA analysis steps starting now. Lee Chang, you are cutting out, but um, no, we can, we can hear it. Uh, sorry, sorry, is the voice uh, working now? Yeah, yeah, it's fine, yeah. Oh, okay. with the ideas, then goals and context, followed by the significance, and last but not the least, the five senses. While my partner, Shibei, will briefly explain our material, the lesson plans. So the issue we have identified is the lack of contribution from the students in the classroom. A brief introduction of the background is that in most Chinese primary schools classes, teaching usually occurs in a lecture style, where the teachers occupy 95% of the time and leave little space for students to contribute. Our targeted audience is the students of third grade in the education center, and our collaborator is one of the English teachers from TAL Education Group. To address the issue, our goal is to create engaging content in students' learning process and make learning, especially memorizing vocabularies, more interactive and fun in a way students can be motivated to contribute more in classrooms. We have been in contact with our collaborator who used to work with Shibei in the same education center. She is taking charge of six classes and after our communication, on top of the fact that students are not contributing enough, she also pointed out that students often seem bored and lack of attention. And thanks to the flexibility of her classes, we are able to put our practice into her classrooms. But first of all, the reason we think the issue matters is because the academic emotion of boredom is one of the most commonly experienced emotions of students in schools. But a lot of schools and teachers have overlooked the issue of boredom experienced by students and attribute this emotion to laziness, student anxiety or depression, or to personality variables. While in fact, boredom is experienced as the lack of activity or being disengaged from satisfying activity. It can occur during an activity and also when there is no activity in which to engage. Boredom is an active experience rather than a simply relaxed experience which can be mild or unpleasant or to actually painful. The individual who is bored has difficulty paying attention, difficulty concentrating, and the effort is required to maintain focus on what is going on in the environment. Because of the negative influence brought by boredom, we have concluded that in our project a very important part that helps students to contribute in class is motivation. Motivation is one of the most used words in teaching today, and it, it is quite a complicated concept. To break it down, according to Gilbert's research in 2013, that there were three things going on at any given time in a classroom. Children taking new information on board, children processing the new information, children being detained, having fun. The last one has to be an integral part of the first two for them to be effective. So what we can see here is that Fun is a key to motivation, as it is not only useful, it is essential to learning, not as a boat on extra, but as an integral part of learning. And more importantly, all learning has an emotional base. Unless we emotionally believe something to be true, we do not fully believe it. There are a lot of emotions that drive us to learn. For children of third grade, make them feel happy and sense of satisfaction is the most effective way as real motivation comes from within. So what we know is that children will not enjoy sitting there like puddings, passive and inert. So we come up with a teaching framework that involves the variable activities. Basically, it is a structure of lesson plan, but depending on the themes of the lesson, teacher can choose a range of appropriate activities. And more importantly, each lesson will include a small project so the teachers and students can work together around the project and learn from it. For more details, I will hand over to my partner, Shibei. Because we don't really have much time for five senses, so I will go through this really quickly. Hi, everyone. I'm Shibei. 
The following section consists of these three parts. First, I'll introduce the differences between traditional lesson and our lesson, then show you the outline of eight topics for their summer classes. In the end, I'll show you example of a detailed lesson plan that we designed with our collaborator. As Jerry mentioned, our collaborator is one of my former colleague. I used to work there in the Shanghai branch and teach those case English, so I'm familiar with the course content and classroom procedures. Just like most English classes in China, the traditional lessons highly focuses on grammatical knowledge. There are lots of exercises during and after class, such as multiple choice question, gap filling, and true or false. And most of the class time, teachers keep talking while students sitting on their chairs take notes. Therefore, traditional lesson lack of students' engagement and children get bored easily. The new lesson plan focuses on dialogues and communication. We encourage students to practice vocabularies and sentences even when they are not familiar with grammatical rules. We encourage more over practices and put them into situational things, which can help enhance their everyday conversational skills. In addition, a variety of activities can make students feel re relaxed and with less tension in class so they can express in English easier and be more engaged. There are eight lessons during their summer school, which will begin on the 19th of June. We are planning to integrate eight different communication scenarios into their course content, and we are planning to apply drawing in animals, campus, and ideal bedroom topics using role play in the topics of restaurant, career, and traveling, and playing games in the topics of fruits and sports meeting. Next, I'll show you an example of a detailed lesson plan. The topic is restaurant or food. This lesson aims at practicing vocabularies related to food, enhancing communication skills in restaurant, and getting to know cultural differences between Chinese and Western dining table. The teacher will provide pictures of Chinese and Western dishes, dialogue templates, and videos for students. In these two templates, we provide examples of dialogue structures for students. They can put different kinds of food on the underline and play different scripts. And the teacher will emphasize cultural differences between these two dialogues. For example, when ordering food, many Chinese people prefer to order all the dishes by themselves if it's his or her treat. While in Western culture, individuality provides everyone the right to order. In addition, in China, bills are usually paid by one person, where many Westerners choose to split their bills. And there are the procedurals of the lesson. Let's go through them quickly. First, the teacher will introduce the topic briefly and ask some questions to warm up the class, then go through the learning materials so that students get to know about new vocabularies. After that, students will be divided into groups of three or five people and decide the role they are going to play. Each of them will get a piece of circular paper, just like a plate, and they can draw their favorite food on their plates, either Chinese or Western dishes. Then their dishes will be pasted on the whiteboard. Then comes to the role play. Each group has about three to five minutes to act. They can prefer they can refer to the script or use their own words. In the meanwhile, they can choose the food they like from the whiteboard. In the end, the teacher will guide them to get a deeper insight about table culture, that is, differences between the East and the West. So that's the end of our presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you, um, Shi Ben Ziyu. Um, does anyone have any comments or feedbacks or questions um, for them? Yeah. yeah, I have some. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have some feedback. Of, 